Hey everybody, this is my 40 gallon brackish tank and normally when we look at this tank we look at my figure 8 puffer there but today we are actually going to talk a little bit about my mollies. If you'll notice that one is swollen up like a pine cone. I noticed a few days ago it looked like it was starting to get a little bit bloated and then yesterday I noticed it was very swollen and then today when I came down this morning and turn the lights on I could see that the actual scales on the side are starting to stand up which is always a bad sign that's really really uh, bloated and swollen so you get a pretty good idea there how fat this one is so I'm not exactly sure what's going on it's definitely not good news <clears throat> excuse me and I probably don't really expect to have this molly around for too much longer but as always, I'm going to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about what's going on and what I've been doing to try to correct it and so on and so forth. So the first thing that comes to mind when you see a fish like this is to give it a nice good Epsom salts bath. And the reason we do that is because when a fish looks like this, it is generally caused by too much water retaining in its body it's it's basically a result of its cells are actually filling up with water and it's retaining too much water throughout its entire body so when you put it in a salt bath you're actually putting it in a solution that has a higher concentration of salts in it than the inside of the fish's cells do and because of this, a lot of the water that's in the fish's cells will move out of those cells and move into the saltier water. And that will reduce the swelling in the fish. Now, in theory, that sounds like a decent enough idea. But as I was giving my fish its salt bath this morning, I gave it a nice Epsom salts bath, a few things started occurring to me. Uh, one, I'm just sort of violence from the one male towards the other is new. I've always seen them sort of chasing each other around in that sort of semi-breeding sort of fashion, but I've never seen the sort of attack that we're seeing this morning. That's interesting. Maybe because it knows it's sick and injured or something? I'm not really sure what's going on with that, but that was interesting. But while giving it its salt bath, I'm giving it, you know, an Epsom salts bath, and a couple of things occurred to me. First of all, this is a urihaline animal, or a lot of people will refer to it as a brackish animal. That's not entirely accurate, and I am actually planning on shooting a video about brackish water and brackish animals and the environment and why using the term brackish fish is, yeah, it's correct enough, but it's not entirely correct, and I want to shoot a video about that. But these mollies are a urihaline animal and that means they can live in a wide range of salinity and so for a fish like this to start swelling up with water doesn't really make sense they have internal mechanisms to be able to cope with that they, they can deal with even very very soft water uh, for a little while mollies don't do very well in soft water but they can live in it because of their urihaline nature this is nowhere near fresh water. I mean, this is nowhere near soft water. It's barely even fresh water at this point. I did have it well within the brackish range. I used to keep it at 1.008 and eventually I brought it down to 1.005 and now we're at 1.004 or maybe 3. So we're just kind of hovering on the edge of brackish at this point. And yet I've still got a fish in there that's swelling up with water. And so that doesn't really make sense. The other thing I got to thinking about after I'd left it in its Epsom salts bath for an hour is despite the fact that I'm putting it in this salt bath, it occurred to me that I'm taking it out of a, we'll call it a, we'll say it's a brackish environment, and putting it in this Epsom salts bath that I had originally set up for my Cynodontus catfish, which is very much a freshwater fish. And so it was not a really, really strong concentration of a salt bath. And after I'd finished the salt bath and put the fish back in the tank here, uh, just out of curiosity, I got out my TDS meter and checked. And the total dissolved solids in my salt bath was 193. And so when I checked this tank here, this tank was 530. 
So even though I was giving the fish a salt bath, I was effectively making the situation worse by putting it in water with less salinity. So I did the opposite of giving it a salt bath, even though I gave it a salt bath. You know, it is the, the salt bath is all relative to the water it's coming from. You know, so effectively I reduced the salinity rather than increasing it by putting it in the salt bath. But the other thing I was thinking about while I was giving it its salt bath is if this fish has something wrong with it that's causing it to swell up with water, even if that uh, something is simply that it's in the wrong environment. Let's say you've got a fish that should be in hard water and you put it in soft water and as a result it starts taking on uh, too much water, it has a hard time dispelling all that water and you start getting a little bit of swelling. What is 30 minutes in a, in a salt bath really going to do? I mean, how much moisture, how much water is that really going to draw out of your fish in, you know, 15, 20, 30 minute salt bath? Moreover, what happens when you put it right back in the tank? Doesn't it go right back? In, like you would have to make corrections for the environment that it was in. So I really just, you know, the, the salt bath to me almost seems like one of those things that hobbyists are told to do so you can feel like you're doing something, you know, rather than just standing there feeling helpless watching your fish die, you know, giving it a salt bath is something you can do. And in some situations, I'm sure it helps, and there are, you know, obviously scientific principles behind why you would do it, but I think without actually altering the environment that the fish is in, simply giving it a salt bath and then putting it right back in the tank you pulled it out of, I don't see how that's going to really change anything, you know? You might give it a little bit of relief for a few minutes if you put it in a, a salt bath. You might draw some of the fluids out of its body, but that's going to be a very temporary situation if you put it right back into the same water you just took it out of. It's going to start taking that water back in again. Now, the other reason a fish might be um, holding on to too much water and swelling up could be internal you know, issues. Something's not working right. They're having problems. The fish is getting old. Things are starting to break down. Uh, I've seen this before. My Congo Tetris, almost every one of them, as they got older and started fading away and looking like they were going to die the swelling began and that was ultimately every single one of them that died they died all sort of poofy and swollen again it was almost sort of like you know stuff was starting to shut down and not work properly and that outward sign of that was the fact that the fish began holding on to too much water their their osmoregulation wasn't working properly so i don't think that's the case with this fish it's only a few years old and i don't think molly's lifespan is that short so I doubt it's old age, although I did buy it fully grown. Um, so I have no idea how old they were when I actually got them. But, you know, I don't know. I don't think it's old age. It doesn't appear to be old age anyway. But something is definitely causing this fish to be all bloated and swollen. And it looks like it's not so bad that it doesn't look all pine coney anymore. It doesn't look like it's... Um, scales i kept wanting to say fins it doesn't look like its scales are sticking out so much anymore but that actually looks better now that i've put it back in its brackish environment or in this saltier environment again it's not quite brackish at this point but it's close so it's definitely definitely saltier than the salt bath i gave it and so what my next step is going to be is to do a water change on this tank. It kind of needs it anyway. And while I'm doing the water change, I'm actually going to put the salt water back in. I'm going to take five gallons of this water out, and I'm going to replace it with five gallons of pretty salty water. So the overall effect will be to raise this tank back up well within the brackish range, which is fine for all the fish in there. They're urihaline animals, and they can deal with that change in salinity without any issue or without any kind of acclimation or anything. So I'm going to jack the salinity up in this tank a little bit. Not a huge amount, but I'm going to definitely get it up into the, you know, definitively brackish area, 1.005 to 8, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. And we're going to give it some time with that and see if this, um, you know, saltier water doesn't help the fish. Because I swear when I lowered the salinity in this tank, my puffer did better, the plants are all doing better, but the mollies, both of the mollies seem to get less colorful and less active when I reduced the salinity in this tank. So, again, maybe it is old age because they both seem to be acting and doing the same thing and behaving the same way. Uh, the only difference is this one is not all swollen up. 
but it's not nearly as vibrant as it used to be, and it's not as active as it used to be. So, you know, again, I'm not really sure what's going on with that because they're just regular old mollies. Uh, you will occasionally see saltwater mollies sold at fish stores, and they're usually sold for quite a bit of money. I've seen them go for over $25, and I always laugh because a saltwater molly, there's no such thing. It's a molly. It's a molly that you put in salt water and it magically becomes a saltwater molly. <laughs> if you put it in fresh water, is it suddenly a freshwater molly? And then you move it into a brackish tank and now it's a brackish molly? It's just a molly. They, they, they can go in salt water. And so you put one in salt water and you can charge $25 for it. I honestly don't know why more um, aquarium shops don't do it. It's a good way to really, really increase your profit margin on your mollies. But at any rate, they can go into very salty water. Um, so can all the other animals in here. So me jacking the salinity up is probably going to hurt my plants more than anything. But I'm curious to see if it's going to actually help um, reduce the swelling in this molly. If it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't know. There's not a lot I can do about it. Um, this was definitely a high dollar fish. I think I paid $30 or $40 for the pair of them something like that but again it's been years that i've had them so i feel like i've got my money's worth out of them if something's going wrong and it's just time for this one to pass on then so be it you know you keep fish for a while especially if you keep lots and lots of fish like i do you sort of get used to it after a while stuff happens with fish and they swell up or they start swimming upside down or around in corkscrews and next thing you know you got a dead fish and you have no idea what happened or why or anything else but your fish is now gone and it's time to get over it and move on so that's probably what's going to be the case with this one but I'll do what I can as long as it's within reason and I don't see why raising the salinity in this tank a little bit from a simple water change is certainly within reason and it'll be interesting to see if we can have any impact on that fish by doing that so there you go there's my unexpected little unpleasant update on my brackish tank again i'll be doing the water change not really going to do a video about it but afterwards when we get the tank all cleaned up i am going to shoot that other video at some point uh talking about uh the, the main theme of the video is going to be why most quote brackish fish are actually found in fresh water most fish that would be considered brackish don't actually live in brackish water then that's why the term brackish fish is sort of a misnomer. Brackish describes the environment they live in, not the animal themselves. The animals are urihaline, meaning that they can live in a wide range of salinity, uh, whereas a standard freshwater fish or even a saltwater fish are referred to as stenohaline fish, meaning that they can only live in a narrow range of salinity. So we'll talk more about that in my next video about brackish water and so on and so forth. So make sure you subscribe and you won't miss any of that. Uh, or anything else I got going. You never know what it's going to be with me. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget this one is my brackish tank. And I'll see you real soon in the next one.